Adwa TV, bringing good things to life. Very good evening to you. Many thanks for joining us on our evening news at six bulletin coming to you live from our main studio here on the John Evans at Amos High Street in Accra and also live and loud across all our social media platforms where you are permitted to join us with your thoughts and comments. On Facebook, it's Adwa TV Ghana and on YouTube, it's Adwa TV underscore GH. Our sincere apologies for the list that's of the bulletin. Coming up, our top stories. In tonight's bulletin, more Ghanaian students have arrived in Accra earlier today, bringing the total number of returnees to over 150. We will tell you more about this and many other developments in relation to the Ukraine-Russia conflict. So in this bulletin, two policemen have been arrested for alleged involvement in the multiple bullion van robberies. This was reviewed by the Ghana Police Service earlier in a statement. So we have details of that coming up shortly. Meanwhile, there is so much tension among NPP sympathizers in Formina constituents in the Ashanti region, leading to the painting of party office in NDC colors by some disgruntled members. Continue to celebrate heritage as Ghanaians in the month of March. We have some feature stories on Ghana's history. Stay with us for details. <laughs> Have details of these and many others, including the very latest in the world of business, sports, and also on the international front. If you are staying with us over the next 60 minutes, I am Isaac Otto. And now let's begin from the airport because 54 more Ghanaian students have arrived in Accra on Monday, March 7, 2022, from Ukraine as part of evacuation efforts by government. This is the sixth batch to come home, bringing the total number of Ghanaian students in Ukraine to over 150. Ghanaians. Now, welcoming the students, the government spokesperson on governance and security, Paul Grif Boache Dankwa, says about 300 students should be in Accra from Ukraine by end of this week. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration has insisted that Ghanaian nationals who do not respond favorably to the opportunity to be evacuated from Russia invaded Ukraine will be left on their own. For the avoidance of doubt, the government will not be responsible for those who decline the opportunity to be evacuated, the ministry said in a statement on Saturday, March 5, 2022. Definitely, you should stay with us for developments and all the updates of this in our subsequent bulletins. Now, away from that to some security stories, two police officers are among several other suspects who have been arrested for their alleged involvement in multiple robberies incidents on bullion van attacks in Accra. Now, the police has announced in a statement on Monday, March 7, 2022, and I quote except of the statement, it says, the Ghana Police Service, after several months of pain-taking, intelligence-led operation at the highest level, has made a major breakthrough in the investigation into multiple bullion van robberies recorded in the Greater Accra region. And these are Kingsway, which occurred in February 2021, and also Bachona Spintes in March 20. 21. The famous Adidin Code James Tom Bullion Van attack, which occurred in June 2021, and also decided the attempted robbery at North Kanichi near industrial area in February 2022. That occurred just recently, and it will continue to say that preliminary investigations have established the involvement of two policemen, among a number of other suspects. It continues to say that the investigations are continuing 
and we expect to soon bring all capable people to face justice. It's stressed that the public will be given further details as soon as it is possible to do so without compromising the ongoing investigations. It ended by saying, we wish to assure the general public that the Ghana Police Service will continue to work hard to rid our country of criminal activities that will disrupt the peace and stability of the nation. We therefore call on all to support us in this endeavor. And this statement I just read to you was released just today, some few minutes ago, March 7, 2022, signed by the Director of Public Affairs, Superintendent Alexander Kweku Obeng. On now, let's go to the Ashanti region because over 100 disgruntled members of the governing New Patriotic Party (NPP) in the Formina constituency of the Ashanti region are demonstrating against the party leadership and are threatening to defect to the opposition National Democratic Congress (NDC) over alleged preferential treatment of persons linked to the independent MP for the area. Andrew Amwakon Esiama who doubles as the second deputy speaker of parliament. Now, the angry MPP supporters who demonstrated on Monday morning played campaign songs of former president John Dramani Mahama as they stressed that they will not be voting for the governing new patriotic party in the next general election. Now, in a bid to show their seriousness, the aggrieved protesters who were threatening to defect to the NDC then painted the NPP forming a constituency office in NDC and that is what you have on your screen currently. They then pasted posters of former president John Dramani Mahama on the building. Now, the protesters have vowed to resist attempts by the independent member of parliament for the area, Andrew Amwako Esiama, to be imposed on them in the next general election. They allege that the leadership of the party has begun some machination to favor supporters of the independent member of parliament, Andrew Esiama, as against those who believe to be from other camps in the ongoing polling station elections. Definitely, you can trust us for details and developments when it drops on this particular subject in a subsequent bulletin. Now, away from that, let's go to Ghana's August House Parliament because the Minister for Rules and highways, Honorable Amwakwata, has indicated that the cessation of road and bridge to sanction via a press release on March, November, I beg your pardon, 17, 2021, across all 38 toll centers of the country by the substantive minister, has incurred no loss of revenue to the state. Now, he added that the approval of the 2022 budget, zero rated road tolls, and as such, there will be no revenue in 2022. Mr. So Speaker, there are in total 38 toll stations across the country. There has been no loss of revenue to the Ministry of Roads and Highways since the cessation of the correction of road tolls. Mr. Speaker, after the presentation of the 2022 budget statement and economic policy of government by the Minister of Finance on 17th November 2020, most road users refused to pay road tolls at all the locations throughout the country. During that period, there was confusion between road users and the correctors. Mr. Speaker, in order to save lives and property at the toll locations, a directive was issued for the present suspension of the correction of the tolls. Mr. Speaker, with the approval of the 2022 budget, effectively, road tolls have been zero rated and there will be no revenue in 2022 for rotos. I thank you.
still stay a while in parliament because the minority caucus in parliament has expressed shock at a revelation made by the rules and highways minister Rabo Amwakwata about the securitization of the electronic transactions levy, e-levy. Addressing the press in parliament, the member of parliament for the Adaklu constituency, Anrabo Kwame Agboja Govin, says there is no sincerity on the part of government. Uh, our friend, our colleague, the road minister was in the house diligently, as I've always said, he's done religiously as a, a minister to respond to questions put uh, to him by colleagues uh, regarding uh, issues on the on road. This morning, I sought to find out from the minister whether the state or how much the state has lost since the, the cessation of road tolls in the country. In, in his uh, answer, he said that in the approved budget, road tolls have been zero rated, so no money has been lost. But friends of the media, you must understand that the minister announced the cessation of the collection of tolls on the day the budget was read. The budget was not approved on the same day. So surely there was about 25 to 30 days gap between the day the announcement was made and the day the budget was actually approved. Significantly, the NPP government pretended that the road to uh, the, the e-levy was all about helping Ghana to stop borrowing, that we should be on our own, we should generate our own revenue and use it to do the things that we needed to do. Shockingly, in the minister's answer today, he let the cat out of the bag by saying that when we pay e-levy, the government was going to securitize and take bigger loans with the e-levy. In effect, e-levy would only give government the opportunity to do even bigger borrowing than they are doing now. So e-levy will not stop us from borrowing because when you borrow, you must pay back. So I think this is very, very important. He also tried to rationalize by saying that when he, the reason they suspended the, the collection of tolls was that the, the, uh, the tolls were not bringing in enough revenue. My brothers and sisters, it's a fact that in the 2022 budget, road fund is supposed to generate at least 2 billion Ghana cities. In 2021, the road tolls accrued over 78 million Ghana city. A government that is, we are told is broke, 78 Ghana, million Ghana city could have paid at least NAPCO, uh, uh, NAPCO people. So it is not true to say to, uh, that the 78 Ghana, uh, million Ghana city is not needed. We needed it. In any case, we are going to invest, he, they claim we are going to invest in, uh, what do you call it, a uh, uh, creating job for the youth, isn't it? Mm. We have other taxes. We have other taxes that are being collected to do the same thing. Why haven't they stopped those ones? They talk about other things, including sports and other, we are paying all those things. So for, for the record, we just want you to be aware and convey this to the Ghanaian, that contrary to government comments, that e-levy is to give us independence from the Bretton Wood institutions, i.e., so that we stop borrowing, today you've heard it yourself. Subsequently, he tried to wiggle himself out of it by saying it is possible. That was not the answer he gave me when I asked him a direct question. But knowing what he said was not going to sit well with the Ghanaian people because he exposed the government's real intention. The real intention is for government to get the e-levy passed and securitize it and take bigger loans. So generations beyond me, beyond the minister, beyond President Akufuado will be saddled with debt. I, don't, I think this is insincerity on the part of government. You can see why Ghanaians are still opposed to this because there's no sincerity on part of government. The minority members on the Roads and Highways Committee of Parliament, they're led by Honorable Kwame. Governance Agboja. Now we will keep an eye on this and update you on any development in our subsequent bulletins. Let's take a step away from Parliament and do some stories related to our heritage. And as as Heritage Month is here and teaching and learning about Ghana is the focal point of this month, we start to find out from some Ghanaians how much history they have on the Ghana national flag 
and what it means to them. And quite a number of them were able to give an explanation to the flag, its colors, and what they stand for. Now, Rachel Kwashi, my colleague, has the rest of the story. If you use the high streets regularly, I'm sure you might have come across where I am sitting. I'm sure you might have noticed where I am sitting. I am sitting close to the lighthouse here in Jamestown and also on a water fountain that was put together by the then governor of the Gold Coast in 1910. But what is the history behind it? Let's go into the community and ask if the residents even know the reason why this was put together or they even have a knowledge about it. Twenty steps away from the stone fountain for water is this edifice. I'm sure you have less knowledge about it. Google <laughs> This was a grave by one of the slave masters. But let's know what is written here. I seem not to get the exact thing, but it was put together in 1922. I'm sure this will be the name for the slave master. Uh, contract tour. It has li very least information, but to the best of my knowledge, this is a grave of one slave master. Okay. Yeah. Fountain, water fountain, ni a craft. But it seems most of them do not know what is being used for and why it was here. The inscription reads that this stone forming the foundation of a drinking water fountain to commemorate the inauguration of the construction of the Accra Water Works. It was laid by His Excellency Sir John, Governor of the Gold Coast in 1910. As we celebrate the Ghana Month on Adwa Television, I took the opportunity to know the history behind it and to also educate you in case you don't know that this water fountain was way back put together in 1910 by the then Gold Coast Governor. As we celebrate the Ghana month, I take the opportunity to educate you in case you don't know but might have seen this structure from years back. For Adwa News, my name is Nanya Makolesing, Jamestown, Accra. Since the apologies for the airing of Frank Vishwa, but the story you just watched was filed by my colleague, Nanya Makoles, and she gives us more revelation about the Jamestown.
lighthouse. Now, a step away from that, let's bring you the title of the story I read earlier on Ghana's national flag and what some Guineans had to say about it. The Ghana flag was adopted upon independence of the Dominion on March 6, 1957. It was designed the same year by Theodosia Oko, a renowned Guinean artist. The flag was flown until 1959 and then reinstated in 1966. The Ghana flag symbolizes and represents a given nation. It is flown by the government of the nation and its citizens. As part of activities to mark the Heritage Month in the month of March, the news team had some interaction with a section of Ghanaians with the aim of attesting to the historical attitude of Ghanaians in the areas of our history on all aspects of the country. When asked to design the Ghana flag and its colors, this was what they had to say. Okay, my name is Ike, I'm a first engineer. Uh, Madam T. T. D. C. Uku. Yes, she's the one who designed the Ghana flag. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us something about the Ghana flag, the, the colors? What does it stand for? Uh, the red, the red, the red means uh, our forefathers fought for the, uh, for us. Yes, and then the gold also means unity. And the green also means uh, uh, forest. And then the black makes us Ghanaian or African. Yeah. So, uh, to you, know, what does the flag mean to you? Of course, the flag makes me as a Ghanaian. Yes. So, I uh, for flag, flag presents us as a Ghanaian. That's what, what, what I mean. Yeah. I can't answer to you. Oh, you're always welcome. My name is Mr. Dazi. I'm a retired officer. Please, I want you to tell us a bit about the Ghana flag. Who, who designed the Ghana flag? Uh, the person who designed the Ghana flag, I, for, uh, I forget the name. But the Ghana flag, the red represents black. The yellow is the, our money, and the green is our land. So you as a Ghanaian, what does the Ghana flag mean to you? I value Ghana flag. Because any time I see a Ghana flag, I'm happy. The, the greatest pleasure that I have is a Ghana. I'm a Ghanaian. I love Ghana. And I love Ghana. I will continue loving Ghana. But you're here with your wing and I like to say you do to make a Ghana flag. Now, does it mean to Ghana flag? Why not a design of Ghana flag? I think it's a good idea. So now, let me ask you a little bit more Ghana flag. Yes, I do. The red stands for the black flag of our forefathers. The green stands for the forest, the green vegetation of the country. And the yellow stands for the mineral resources that we have in the country. So, what are we like that? What does the Ghana flag mean? It means a lot of things to me as a youth and as a citizen of the country. When you Ghana see it, when you Ghana is playing a match and I see our flag, it's most visible in a kind of the end of the Ghana So, the flag means a lot of things to me as long as I'm a Ghana and a citizen of Ghana. Now, you have to say that the Ghana flag is a good thing. Now, you have to say that a Ghana flag in it. Why not a design in Okay, um, so they are okay. So now let's not say it like, uh, where do you call it no woman? They are standing for Okay, so red must stand for the blood which is shed on our behalf. And then the yellow is for the gold that we have. And then the green is for the vegetation. And then the black star for the hope of the nation. So you as a Ghanaian, what does the uh, Ghana flag mean to you? Okay, it, it's like the heritage of my culture because it has the colors and the meaning in it. Yeah, that's what I think.
interesting one there you can equally share with us what you know about the ghana national flag and what it means to you on all our social media platforms on facebook it's adwa tv ghana and on youtube it's adwa tv underscore tg we are staying a while on heritage month because beats are a fundamental part of the ghanaian heritage and not only are they a testament to the vibrance of ghanaian creativity but they also play a significant role in the country's history rituals and culture as we journey on in the month of heritage my colleague elizabeth kofi of the news team throws the spotlight on african beats beats have been a part of western african culture for a very long time over the past decades many locals began to consider beats as slightly old-fashioned a visit to a beat seller here in accra revealed a lot of hidden meanings to the many beats we see like crystal our ripper and light off is just but a few and did you know that some beats are reserved for some people in the traditional african society and not all beats are suitable for ceremonies like marriage Luckily, their popularity is growing again. They are getting more and more attention among collectors, jewelry makers, and everyone who loves and appreciates their captivating beauty in and outside of Africa. Here is more to the beats than you know. And oh, we cannot talk about beads without telling you one of the main reasons why African women do wear them. Men are the main objective of attraction when it comes to beads wearing for women. For some men, they say it's sexually arousing and if a woman comes by without it, they are likely to work them out. 
The history and heritage of Ghanaian beads are also protected by the Ghana Beads Society. The first of its kind in Africa, the society is recording, preserving, and promoting the culture of Ghanaian beads. The majority of beads produced come from the Ashanti and Krobo people in the Ashanti and Eastern region respectively, who occupy areas of Afram Place, Ikrape Mountains, among others. The craft is often based on a family tradition and know-how is passed on from one generation to another. Using mainly handmade techniques, beads often have unique design and charm. Welcome to Africa. Welcome to Ghana. <laughs> It's that sexually arousing for me. Now let's still stay on the heritage man. But if you were born in the late 90s or in 2000, you may not be able to appreciate the story better because gone are the days that movies which were available to watch were Cantata, Things We Do For Love, Obra, Inspector Bediako, Agro, Agro, I beg your pardon, and some few others. However, the modern day trend in movies are telenovelas where Western, Asia, Spanish, Mexican, and other foreign movies are shown on televisions in Ghana. The local media outlets are seen translating these movies into local dialects to grasp audience attention. Meanwhile, as Ghana celebrates its month of heritage, Millicent Tiborimo hits the streets to find out from some Ghanaians on whether or not it's time old day movies are brought back to the screens or the new trend of movies is the way to go. I vividly remember growing up as a child in the early 90s. Every kid I grew up with at Edra in the Ashanti region never joked with their Sunday night bath because you would be refused entry into Hajia Hajare's room, which we wouldn't want it to happen because one cannot afford to miss an episode of TV series like Obra, I Told You So. Cantata, things we do for love among others. We felt a day was never complete without watching such movies. The moral lessons, education, and information was just amazing. As time changes and technology keeps improving, the narrative is changing as telenovelas are becoming the order of the day. As Ghana celebrated the month of heritage, some Ghanaians have argued that it's about time movies with storylines like the opera cantata among others are brought back to our tv screens <laughs> Oh, 
definitely the noodles generation are confused about the movies we are showing because they were not around when all of these movies were being shown on our television screen but we are still staying a while on heritage month because did you know that you may be giving different interpretations to your scarf due to the will and style it is tied because you might be doing it in the wrong way well as Ghana marks the heritage month the news team throws focus on scarf tying and its meaning the origin of headscarf is traced back to its origination in sub-Saharan Africa. It was used as a means of protecting one's hair and scalp from exposure and also an important piece to the culture and spirituality of African women. It was originated from the 13th century BC. The covering of the headscarf symbolizes status, marriage, and family lineage. It's also used as an ornamental head covering or fashion accessory or for functionality in different settings. It is worn differently depending on one's tribe or religion. Well, meet Atre. She's a scarf seller. Maybe you may be confused as to which scarf you should be wearing for what occasion. <laughs> What I say, hey, we be our hands when you are sorry no call. Our fear crowd on Baruch and Hunton. Look who there, and now say, Ubuemo, Ubuena, Ubuemo, Uberbon Wensi, Noabo, Sibia, Peter Uberbon, Uabo. It sometimes represents ethnicity, wealth, mourning, and marital status, depending on the type of head wrap and how. It is one. Tracy Ishen is another trader and she tells us more. Oh, mommy, and I will be papa, you know. Over top black, pano, and in a sunny atini, and to my body, you know. Oh, quite a year, a year, be a son. Well, oh, boy, I'm going to come and I'll be doing what you say. And in it, now he near, and I'll be doing what you know. We are burning black, say. Now I fry into my black, and so I can 
Sani abeya uti hu nda ho. E ye ni ye red. But me at all red and black. They say Sani ame bo we ne sa na abe bon. See ya. Ya wo oda sobo. Ya wo oda sobo ni boni kitwa na uba wa bloti suduko. Ya wo white. We so. Any asked that oh, eh, be our oak on us. Sorry, I hear ye never ye Sunday, no. I woke quite sorry, but what to me are bowy. Now the queer be one so a year near black and white. Opa, over to me at all black, no white way. And also now our boy to say black and I are born. Eh, be our brewer into open white. White, I be be any more. And also over to me about white way. Over to me about white way in some quan. Me pe hi na wo ko wedding ana engagement a wele we ya betu me akọ wedding e betu me akọ engagement e betu me akọ sorry we yin su betu me depend wo ntuma na o be she o no se mo ko sorry and say so ba wo ko sorry o be di uti so sa and ya wa ya uti o hun ya uti o e wo bible mo se o ba se wo kata uti so nti na ya nua no i was a for no o mo na mba bia o mo de o mo boduku Inti ya ya no ya mbodu ku mba kromo no o ku asori a wa nkwa se o todu ku na wa bo fine se ne ebe ya o ti hu nda ho we o da so bon kitwa ya wa kese na ya won kitwa we ya kitwa ni bi o betu mi abo no kama betu mi di akobe bi asori o betu mi di akobe bi asori be bi a wo ko bi a we ya betu mi aku e be ya be ya wo hu ade so se wo nya duku be se six ai na o di a she wo ni amem to my BI, so we need to do Kukama, Kama, Kama. You're still watching news at 6 p.m. here on Adwa Television. If you stay with us right after this break, we have the very latest in the world of business. Please stay with us. <music> Welcome aboard the safest airline in Africa. With industry leading safety measures to protect your well being. The first in Africa to earn a diamond standard of safety. Offering a more contactless, safe, and seamless experience. Delivered with a smile by Africa's first fully vaccinated crew. Creating special memories that bring the joy back to flying so you can continue making memories with your loved ones. Book your flight with Randair today. Randair, the safest airline in Africa. Randair, fly the dream of Africa. City is a manufacturing supply of high quality fashion accessories. We design and make quality bow ties, flying ties, lapel pins, ladies brooches, fabric necklaces, African wares and so much more for your weddings, schools, institutions, bands, choir, singing groups, individuals and so many more. We use both African print and foreign fabrics to make your beautiful accessories for you. Oh yeah! Contact us via call or WhatsApp or SMS on 0240-926-564 
Locate us at Odoko Official Town, opposite ML's Preparatory School. Check us out on social media, Facebook and Instagram at Blue City Fashion. Blue City, creativity and style. Thank you so much for staying with us. Now let's do some business-related stories. And the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers Ghana, COPEC, has predicted that fuel price will sell at 9 Ghana cities per litre by the close of March this year. Now, according to COPEC, the unprecedented hike in the prices of fuel is partly due to the depreciation of the Ghanaian currency and also the Russian's evasion of Ukraine, which is affecting international market prices. His comment comes after an increase in fuel prices at some pumps from 7 cities 99 Ghana pesos to 8 cities 29 pesos. Chamber of Petroleum Consumers Ghana, COPEC, has predicted that fuel will sell at 9 Ghana cities per liter by the close of March this year. According to COPEC, the unprecedented hikes in the prices of fuel is partly due to the depreciation of the city and Russia's invasion of ukraine which is affecting the international market prices in an interview with the executive secretary of copec duncan Amua, he said the current prices at the pump is actually on the downside he said and i quote what the situation in ukraine will mean that international market prices would continue to surge again we we'll also have the situation where the city is not doing so well I foresee the Ghanaian fuel prices crossing the 9 Ghana CD mark before the end of the month. Unquote. Only two weeks ago, fuel prices averaged about 6 Ghana CDs 40 pesos per liter as the price stabilization and recovery levy was reinstated by the National Petroleum Authority. The Chamber of Petroleum Consumers Ghana Executive Secretary Duncan Amwa said he had expected the increase to be much higher. More business news tonight. The Ghana International Trade and Conference has called for sanity within Ghana's trading space and urged the business community to be accommodative and adjust to government's policies in the face of the effect of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, considering the current global economic downturn as a result of the pandemic, economists around the world are critically revising and adjusting policies to keep governance floats and this was contained in a statement issued by chief executive officer selassie kofi akum the ghana international trade and finance conference has called for sanity within ghana's trading space and urged the business community to be accommodative and adjust to government policies in the face of the effect of covid 19 pandemic ghana's economy is heavily import driven this is a known fact until recent times, Ghana had always recorded a trade deficit, a 30% reduction for all goods, and a 10% reduction on vehicles is a decisive and satisfactory move to please all stakeholders. Such a pivotal decision by government should be considered by the general trading community as an interim measure and subject to review in the soon future depending on economic trade indicators within the import and logistics sector of Ghana's economy, considering the current global economic downturn as a result of the pandemic, economies around the world are critically revising and adjusting policies to keep government afloat. Any proper, prudent and competent manager of any economy will now appear to the unclearing and insensitive to its citizens. The call on government by some few selected stakeholders to sustain or abolish the benchmark values signifies a sense of dishonesty, relatively unfair 
and on counter moves. However, we at the Ghana International Trade and Finance Conference do not blame these few selected stakeholders. The Ghana International Trade and Finance Conference appeal for sanity within the trading space for Ghana's economy and has urged the business community to be accommodative and adjust to government policies in this tough and rough period. We are all involved in building our motherland. This should not depart from our days and our day lives. Let's trust in the system and be hopeful in our government. And that will do for business tonight and that's how we bring the entire bulletin to a close we appreciate that you could spend one hour of your time with us but before we go let's take a look at a recap of our headlines in tonight's bulletin we told you about some ghanian students who have arrived in accra earlier today bringing the total number of returnees to over 150. Also in this bulletin, we showed you about some two policemen who have been arrested for alleged involvement in the multiple bullion van robberies, which was revealed by the Ghana Police Service earlier today in a statement. Meanwhile, there is so much tension among MPP sympathizers in Formina constituency in the Ashanti region, leading to the painting of party office in NDC colors by some disgruntled members. We also brought you some highlights of some historical monuments across the country as we continue to celebrate the Month of Heritage. Remember, we are still in the Month of Heritage, so continue to eat Ghana, dress Ghana, project Ghana, bath Ghana, do everything in the name of Ghana. Regulators is happening.